My name is Ruby Thomas. I am the niece of Dorothy Carroll and Anthony Carroll, who lived in this farmhouse. They were the last residents to live here at 8765 Special Place, Nanjamore, Maryland. Well, first of all, it is a house that belongs to African Americans, uh, which is rare in Charles County, and a house that is on 52 acres of land. This house was an original one-story structure. Uh, who lived in this house was a slave, and her name was Litia Diggs. But we see that she also went by her nickname, Lottie Diggs, as well. And it is assumed that she was the midwife or uh, a servant or whatever title you want to give her for the Posies. Now, Richard K. Posey was white and he lived in a farmhouse just up the hill from here. Well, he fathered children by Lottie Diggs, and Lottie Diggs' children gained from his will a substantial amount of land throughout this Posey Town area. Well, Lottie Diggs' children grew up probably in this house, but in 1880, she lived with him in the big house. Now, when we were growing up, we called that house a house because it was up on a hill. Well, Lottie Diggs probably lived in the one room structure of this house. And then later on, this house became a two story structure as the carpenter, Anthony Carroll, uh, not the Anthony Carroll that I just mentioned, but his grandfather uh, was registered in the census as a carpenter. And he and I guess others in the neighborhood put their skills together and built this house as it stands today. The people that lived in this house made this house important. Lottie having an interracial marriage or, or a midwife relationship back right after the Civil War or during the Civil War was unheard of at that time. And Richard Posey, to recognize his children and to give them acres and acres and acres of land was unheard of back in that time. This house also served as a farmhouse, so there was farming going on here. My name is William Ronald Brown. I am the nephew of Anthony and Dorothy Carroll, who presided in this historic house. Down here, as, as, as we look to my left, uh, you walk past the wood line and there is the stream where we used to get our, our water. And down in, these, in this tree line here, there were horses and there was, there's a fence line there where the horses were, were, were uh, fenced in. And then further back this way, there was the hog pen where, where the hogs were kept. And then to my right was the chicken coop and, and the corn house. And then we had the, uh, the barn where we keep the tractors and to my recollection, we never did any tobacco farming, just mostly corn and gardening. Uh, the Carroll family farm, from my research, was a very large farm. And it, it was sort of a central gathering place. I know that originally it was a religious meeting place. Religious services and gatherings were held, held there at the farm. So, Many of the neighbors came in, as well as of the relatives that were located in the area. Back in the early 50s, the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, Apostolic Faith, was founded in this house, where now the church in Ironsides now stands. But it orig originated right here and back in the early 50s, the community would come here and have their church meetings on Sunday mornings and listen to the broadcast of Bishop S.C. Johnson, who was the original founder of the Church of Jesus Christ of Apostolic Faith. But back in the 50s, being that he couldn't be at all the churches at one time, he would have broadcasts that the people would come and listen to, and we would gather around the radio on Sunday mornings and listen to his broadcast. And this room would be full of people and, and then the overflow would be into the kitchen. And I remember as a little boy, we had a little tin can and we kept the flour in. And that was my seat. 
and I better not get off of it until everything is over because <laughs> my aunt got that look on her face boy you better not move <laughs> so I stayed there and kept quiet like I was supposed to until this meeting was over well knowing that the church one of the churches started here in this house gives me a good feeling to know that uh, God played a very important part of this house and religion played a very important part of this house. We prayed every day. Um, sometimes we would ha have prayer meetings on Tuesdays, prayer meetings on, Wednesday, on, on Thursdays, and then two services on Sunday. So it was, there was a lot of God in this house. And growing up in this house, it was, I like I said, a, a, a wonderful experience. In 2017, I called a reporter and I said, I got a cemetery that, need, that folks need to know about. And he said, where? And I said, in Nanjamoy. Well, folks up and down Poseytown, some knew, some didn't know. And as we were growing up, we knew that there was a cemetery and because uh, our aunt, and we called her Tump, but her name was Dorothy Carroll. And Uncle Anthony would let, they told us that there was a cemetery there. And, uh, but we were never to go into those woods to look for the cemetery because there was also ghost stories that they shared pertaining to the cemetery. And uh, I remember Aunt Tump telling me at one point, she said, oh, we see ghosts walking around all out there in the middle of the night, so you don't want to go out there. So you have to, when you turn in here, you pass the cemetery. So whenever you pass that cemetery, you wondered, oh, let me see if I can see a ghost. Only in the daytime. We wouldn't look for one at nighttime. So, so we knew something was there, but we didn't know the magnitude of the people that were buried there. But in 2017, we had Esther Reed, and she came, and they started to explore the cemetery. Well, we found at least 70 or more unmarked graves, shallow graves out there, and there may be more. So we kind of figured that the cemetery probably dates back to the late 1800s, and people were being buried there probably up until the, maybe the middle 1920s or 1930s, something like that. But at that time, Mount Hope did have its own cemetery, but it appears that people were still not, who were members of Mount Hope, who maybe didn't have a church at the time, were still being buried in the Carroll Cemetery. I guess the Carroll family was a prominent family back in that day. Uh, just about all their uh, siblings were well educated and that was kind of unheard of you know back during that time you know for black people going to college getting degrees and and have a you know a profitable life um, yeah, I just great memories here you know great memories I remember visiting the Carroll family farm as a child and it's, it's sort of funny to me as I talk with my cousins that always used to come down too, especially during the summer. It was a family gathering place. We had many an outing and as children, we just enjoyed the wide open spaces where we could just run and play. And there were trees to climb and chickens to chase and just all kind of different exciting experiences that we didn't have in our areas where we lived. My sister reminded me that we used to get the walnuts from the walnut trees. I didn't remember walnut trees, but I did remember the fruit trees and just the fun and all of the good food. And, and the family just got along so well, all of the aunts and the uncles and just enjoyed being together. It was just, just a wonderful time. Being that this house means a lot to me would be a dream come true to, to see it come back to life again. Uh, so much history in this house that needs to be shared, but um, just to see this place to be vibrant again, and 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 I'm sure the the ancestors that live here 
uh, still looking down and saying, Lord, I hope they can get that house back together, you know? So, because there's a lot of spirit in this house that still remains, and, and you can feel the presence of, of the people that, that lived here, you know? And just hopefully one day we could, we'll make that happen.